guys, welcome back to Clockwork Dandy Needles for another breakdown of Vinland Saga Season 2, Episode Number 2. The memes are finally making sense. Everywhere I used to look, there were these Farmland Saga memes, and I just didn't get it. I was like, I don't understand where these are coming from. But now I do. I finally understand why those memes exist. Hello, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a great week. We are going to be breaking down the second episode, and it was a very different episode. There's a lot of really good stuff going on, which is a bit more subtle this week, which I want to break down on this video. But thank you guys so much for your support. Welcome back to the channel. If you haven't already, make sure you guys are subscribed. Subscribed. Very slowly, I am compiling my midway review where I'll be breaking down top three OPs, EDs, and current anime. What I did realize with OPs and EDs is they sometimes an anime will have a second OP halfway through the season. What I might have to do is do the midway one and then do a second one in the final review. I do want to note that I feel really stupid that I didn't realize both Vinland Saga's OP and ED. They're both in English. Don't know why I just didn't pick up on that fact. I think it was because I was so busy breaking it down with you guys. It escaped my ears that I was actually hearing a language I understood. Katil is running his farm in a slightly different, interesting manner. He's not just going to have them as slaves. Still going to get them to work really, really hard, but he's going to give them a purpose. If you can raise a farm and you sell your work, you can actually buy your freedom, which I think would also allow them to acclimatize to where we are right now. You can actually do something with your days. You have something to work for, an actual goal. Sometimes it makes people work better if they have a goal. Right now, I'm struggling to focus on my costumes because I don't exactly have anything I want to do with them. I don't know what I want to do right now, if I want to go for competitions or not. Generally, if I find that I know I want to do something, I will work better as opposed to having vague idea. Something that we were mentioning in the comments as well, this season, following the after effects of trauma and what trauma does to a person, something I think is very important to a recovery process is the idea of purpose. There needs to be a purpose to your days or you're going to get lost in your thoughts. It seems like Katil is actually treating them like human beings. This is unfortunate. You're now slaves. I'm going to still treat you like a human. You can actually have that freedom back. I know that you're not going to want to live like this forever, but eventually I want you to be able to maybe gain something. He's still getting the money, the profits. He's still having something in return. He's allowing them to eventually rejoin society. And this week we do get a confirmation. We are in Denmark. Everyone around here is speaking Danish, but I'm not going to think too hard about everybody actually being able to understand each other because even Thorfinn is Icelandic. He's talking very easily to both of these characters. If they did do this and they were working on the farm and let's say perhaps they did actually buy their freedom in three years, they would actually be adjusted to Danish society. They'd probably be able to pick up the language. If they don't want to go back to England, they could probably stay where they are, settle down and continue being a farmer. Felt a little bit like, is it rehab? Rehabilitation centre. You do something, you go through a load of trials, tests and stuff. They do it in a way where they condition you to go back into society to actually be able to fit in as opposed to sticking out where you might reoffend or something. Let's talk about Thorfinn because I think my jaw might have hit the floor when I suddenly heard Thorfinn talking quite calmly. We are so used to Thorfinn being a big ball of rage. We're now seeing him very subdued and obedient. I'm not used to him talking. It was really, really strange. And even this week, I was actually able to go, oh, this is what he sounds like. I remember now. Season one, he was so busy trying to focus on his revenge. It was more angry grunts, yells and stuff. This week, he's very calm and a bit monotone. Even when Katil leaves, he goes back to being a silent persona. He still is there to talk to Aina, tell him what to do. He's able to communicate calmly with him. It's very monotone, flat, spoken with no emotions because after effects of trauma, he's still communicating but he's not excited he's not bothered either way he doesn't care either way it's like he's given up for Finn's talking but he's got no purpose anymore he's lost his purpose and as much as we love hate Asklad, he gave Thorfinn a purpose, wake up every day, I'm going to try and beat you, today I'm going to beat you, this is what I'm going to do, and it gave him a routine. But now we're seeing Thorfinn with no purpose, no nothing, no care, he doesn't give a damn anymore. He's on autopilot, he's doing what he's told, that's just what I'm used to. He was also doing as he was told season one. I did wonder if we could trust Katil, he's appearing very, very nice. It would seem that the task he has set could also be a impossible task. You've got to clear this amount of trees can make a farm. I think they're living actually in huts. You've got to do something with this land. It does feel like it's a bit impossible. 
Katil can't be everywhere and handing his work down to retainers because this farm is so huge makes sense that the retainers are the a-holes. So you've got someone nice on top with good intentions because he can't do all the work himself. The other people who are starting to abuse their positions for powers, the retainers we see eating the food, slacking off, not doing their work, more in line with what I was expecting from this episode. I wasn't shocked. This is what I was expecting. You've got such a big farm, you will need to have to hire people, get other people to work for you. I know is right. These people still have to work for somebody. They seem to have a bit more chance of freedom because they've chosen chosen to work for Katil as opposed to you are working for Katil. They have a choice. Ina and Thorfinn appearing very different but actually deep down I started to realise there was more similarities than I first thought. Ina, he's still very hopeful that he might be able to get away. So I almost want to say he's younger than Thorfinn but it's very difficult to tell because Thorfinn is horrifically aged up by his events and his traumas that he's been through. Most likely that he's eventually going to turn out more like Thorfinn once he starts to work harder and the experience ages him up a little bit. Fourth in right now, what happens once you've suffered so much that you've accepted everything and given up? Whilst Ina still hasn't quite given up, he's still hopeful. He still believes that he could get out quite quickly. But we do see Ina quite quickly become a bit more quieter and dulling when he realizes how big a task actually is it's not just a case that you're going to have to make money on a farm you've actually got to clear the land you've got to till it you've got to make sure that land is ready for seeds and stuff Thorfinn simply doing as he was told actually cutting trees down it did have my jaw on the floor for a fair bit because he was very unrecognizable he wasn't yelling he wasn't angry essentially the perfect slave worker in such a bad term i hate saying it he was doing as he was told he was obedient doing something over and over again it's just his life that's now what he's fallen into but Ina starts to realise this week he gets a dose of reality. Things aren't as good as I initially thought they might be. I, he was very excited when he met Katil. He thought, actually, this is actually not too bad. It's actually not a good place to be. I did actually wonder as well, what would happen if either of these two fell sick, got injured from their work? They'd still be a slave. The likelihood is that Katil may not want to spend that money. I think it's quite ironic that this season we've got quite a few animes airing about farming. We've got the farming isekai and we've got campfire cooking anime about relying on the land very interesting to see compared to this because Vinland Saga is going realistic it's going hard work it's going back breaking it's going everything is taking long time to do farming isn't a very quick thing where you plant a seed next day you've got food like the isekai I would prefer watching Vinland Saga any day to an isekai because this Vinland Saga is realistic but then sometimes I'm in the mood for something a bit more unrealistic I am enjoying the farming isekai so if you are into that I recommend at least checking it out it's gone a little bit too harami for me it's not my thing this is when i started to realize that aina and forfing were very similar right at the start when i first saw them in this episode i was like okay they're different they're very different we see aina is angry he wants justice he doesn't want to be there he sees the injustice that the retainers have done and he gets angry about it which is very similar to young forfing when he sees his father die in front of him he decides he wants justice it's not fair i'm gonna go and get justice for my dad now we're seeing forfin is passive he's given up Ina right now is still in that raw territory where everything has just happened i can presume that Ina's experience is very new compared to forfin who's grown up with it like decades have passed for forfin time has dulled emotions they're still somewhere in there because we do see him affected at the end where he opens an eye when he's listening to the story. A little tiny hint that he's not completely forgotten about everything. Ina going 60 to 0 quite quickly when he sees a pretty face. He's very angry about to tell Katil everything, but then he sees a very pretty face and he just stops. No words, no nothing. Do you wonder if she looks similar to his sister a little bit, but I don't think that's the case because he's actually blushing. So I think it is. He sees someone pretty, he falls in love and he decides that actually I'm going to stay quiet. Everything's maybe not as bad as it is or I'll just deal with it. It's okay for now. Thorfinn tells him, don't do it. It's not worth it. It's going to get worse. Don't do it. So you can tell that maybe Thorfinn has seen other people do the same thing where they've said something and it's got worse. Maybe Thorfinn did. And that's now he's given up. He knows it gets worse. He can't do anything about it. He's just accepted that this is the way things are kudos to Katil for working his fields equally alongside his people i do believe that a good leader is one that helps out 
doesn't shy away from doing the work themselves. He is inspiring. I think the guy is great. It's just sad that his generals and the people who work under him aren't so great. But the general vibe when he is around, only when he's around is hopeful, it's joyful, it's peaceful. Everyone's actually having fun with what they're doing. Even at this point, you see Ina and Thorfinn carrying wheat across. They're not being yelled at at this point. Everyone's actually leaving each other alone. It's nicer. It's at least a different vibe. So you can definitely imagine they would probably prefer to work whilst Katil's around as a Opposed to at a site where anyone could do what they want. Nobody is out of line whilst he's around, apart from when we get to Olma, his son. But respect to Katil, trying to treat his son fairly, trying to be equally as harsh. You need to be working, you're not doing it right. I think he's a bit more critical of his son because you're going to be inheriting this. You have to do this right. So he's more critical on him, a little bit more harsher. I did realise last week I made a bit of a mistake because I said that it could be a threat that these guys end up being raided or something. But because we're in Denmark, that's not going to happen. The little nerdy part of me in side was very happy to learn about farming caring for the land is very very difficult it's not a quick thing so I actually grew up on a school that had a farm is back in the day you couldn't grow crops twice in a row in the same field one set of crops is gonna eat the nutrients if you were to straight up just put seeds in that same plot of land they're not gonna grow strong you might get something but there'll be no nutrients to feed those crops as Katil explains this in the winter we're gonna put the animals on here the animals are gonna dig up the ground with their feet they're gonna be tilling it they're gonna be pooping on it which is nutrients sometimes they would alternate fields I think even up to the Tudor period period and early modern period people were still alternating fields so fields would have different uses this patch of land today is growing my corn but tomorrow is going to be where my sheep are grazing i enjoyed it i thought it was low-key nice to hear katil talking about the life on the farm how things go around obviously at this point he's using it to lecture Omar what the procedure is but it's also there to show us what the life of the farm is that even if it gets to winter and the work is done there's still going to be hard work looking after the sheep and there's going to be work to be done even in the winter months in Denmark the next moment was just absolute chef kiss priceless the anime is mocking fantasy games for the back sheaving of swords i'm looking at you zelda and stuff doesn't work and the amount of videos i've seen with professional swordsmen telling me it just doesn't work it makes you slow as you can see even with Omar, he can't get the tip of the sword out because you'd need to technically tip forward to slide it out the reason why you need a weapon in the first place is because you need to protect yourself it's not be jiggling around struggling to get your sword out making yourself very open because you can imagine if he was in a fight trying to grab that sword right now he's gonna get stabbed no one's gonna wait around for him to get the sword out because that's a weapon they're gonna go for it so put the sword at waist length because that's where your hands are that's where it's easy to grab easy peasy absolutely kudos there because it was mocking fantasy genre for having swords on backs Omar is the character who technically gives us a low-key update on what's happening with England right now he gives us an update that he wants to join King Canute obviously getting an army together because we're told that Harold is rearming it's going to be a fight between Canute and Harold when it comes to really really early history because it's not my period that I've been focusing in I vaguely remember that they're both kings but I have a feeling though Harold wins there's the fight in 1066 against the Normans maybe there's a second Harold I honestly I can't remember shame right now is I don't remember early modern English monarchs not very well Omar I believe is going to become a meme this week week is running away screaming your intentions whilst you're running away from the situation that is going to become a meme i get it you're irritating but i actually understand i get a vibe that he's going to be very very important to our plot he is a character that we might initially we don't like because he's a spoiled brat he's got everything in his hands and he doesn't actually want what he wants he's ungrateful blah 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 but i get it he's basically getting a future pushed upon him that he doesn't really want he doesn't want to become a farmer he's got bigger dreams of doing grander things he's got everybody sucking up to him because they want his father's fortune he can't trust people people are being nice to him or offering themselves up to him because they want something they want a better life from them so people aren't doing anything because of him they're doing it because he's his Katil's son i think he's going to be important to the plot i can really sense it maybe he'll end up joining r2 as they end up heading out to find vinland maybe he'll become important or he'll become friends maybe he'll run away to them and they'll end up having some kind of understanding i don't know deep down underneath that sport brat we can see he cares about the weak being trampled when we've got the drunks walking over it he cares about the drunk men because he doesn't want anything dangerous happening to them he's actually got a caring side in there it's just very difficult to see and you need to actually be looking for it my favorite sequence right at the end
end was the comparison between Wolfin and Ina. Ina's starting to talk about how barbaric the Vikings are, what they do to poor farmers, what happens when his village was invaded. We are even told that the first time it was invaded was by the king's men, and then again it happened again by the Vikings, both sides equally as horrific as the other. It's the horrors of war. The drumming beat, the music at this point is absolutely gorgeous, but the moment when Thorfinn opens his eyes, you could still think he's asleep, but us, the audience, seeing that eye open, we know that Thorfinn is remembering childhood. We see a flashback. The conversation has triggered him to remember something he might have been trying to avoid. Remind me that the two are very, very similar. They've come from very similar backgrounds because initially I was going to go, wait, Einar's still got something to live for. He's got hope. He hasn't. He's got no home to return to. And if anything, Thorfinn's the one who's got a home he could return to, but he doesn't want to. From Leif Erikson, and he's angry because of what happened to Asgard. Leif Erikson was like, we're going to go back to Iceland. Then I realised that they're both actually the same type of person. They're both going through grief. They've both lost everything. They've both lost purpose in life. They've both lost family members regardless. doesn't matter who it is. They've lost people close to them. Next week, however, everything seems to be going out of hand, like I imagine with Vinland Saga. It looks like things go bad because Thorfinn is being held at sword point. Einar looks like he's in danger as well. Doesn't look good. Very excited to see what happens next week if we're going to get a bit of action going on. Very excited to see what happens. I do like the anime. I know a lot of people were saying that a lot of people aren't going to like season two because it is a bit more farm simulator -y. I don't mind. As long as you're telling me a good story, it looks good. The characters are good. I've watched Non Non Yuri and there's no actual plot to that anime. It's just daily life. But because it's so well told, it's got such a good story handled so well. I watched the entire seasons plus more. I think there's like seven seasons now. I've seen all of them. Very excited to see where... Vinland Saga goes. I really enjoy Vinland Saga. What's going to lead them to get to Vinland? Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you guys are having a great time. I hope my ramblings are somewhat interesting. I always worry about things like tangents. I don't know if you can tell, but I split my lip and it really hurts. Trying to talk without moving my face too much. It really, really canes. It snowed yesterday. It hasn't settled, but we're back in a very cold spot again. I think the cold weather split my lip. It sucks. Thank you guys. I really hope that wherever you are is at least somewhat warmer than I am. Or if you have got snow, that you are nice and cosy, whatever you're doing. Thank you so much. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you next week, guys. Bye-bye.